Hi everybody, that's my Dr. Nick impression. My name is Jonathan, I'm a nurse practitioner student. I am also a registered nurse and I hopefully will graduate, that's really dark, there you go. I hopefully will graduate in May. I will hopefully take my certification test in June or July. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm almost done, which is wonderful because over the summer and over the fall, I had a ton of clinical hours. This summer, I spent 270 hours of pediatric time with a fairly new pediatrician building his business. I saw a lot of two-week-olds, two-month-olds, two-year-olds. Wonderful clinical experience. Fantastic person to follow. I really enjoyed my time, but it was basically my full-time job. Over the fall, they gave us four months to complete 270 hours. Again, wonderful experience, fantastic family practice clinic, wonderful person that I followed. He was a great person, I learned a lot, but it was basically my full-time job. I tried to keep a job over the weekend, it wasn't steady, but now I am done with the fall semester. I have quite a bit of time uh, until January when I start my spring semester, so I'm going to make some videos about what I learned. I'm going to make some videos about what I figured out. And hopefully remember that I am using these to be a better nurse practitioner, but I'm also using these videos to help you be a better uh, patient and a more informed person. Just a note about some of the videos that I made previously. Thank you very much. I, I started these videos uh, to help a friend named Chris. I did not expect that two of my videos would get a thousand views a piece. Um, I haven't paid attention to any of that for a while, for about six months. I just looked two or three days ago and I was blown away. I am very thankful, I am very blessed that people actually watched these videos and actually gained information and stared at my ugly face for, you know, five to ten minutes. It's amazing. It's wonderful. I, I'm, I'm truly um, blessed to have that occur. So, given all that, during the summer, there you go, during the summer I created for class a handout on teeth. I also included one over Advil and Tylenol. That will be my next video. If you want to take a picture of this and use it, take a picture of it and use it. I will try to include it as a Word document down below in the description, but just in case I can't figure it out, take a screenshot, oops, take a screenshot and use this information. This is all from the Academy American Academy of Pediatrics. They have a wonderful, extensive PDF file that is very long. I basically shortened the PDF file uh, into a very concise handout. If you want to read the entire PDF file, be my guest. But these are the highlights from the American Academy of Pediatrics. So teething is what we're going to discuss. Wow, that's really bright. Okay. Um, primary teeth, when you get teeth eruption, that is your first set of teeth. They erupt from the gums, they come down. Uh, there's approximately what's called a 7 plus 4 rule. So at 7 months of age, the child should start to get their first teeth somewhere around there. Every child's different. Every child will have different times of teeth. They will start at different times, I should say. But about seven months, the first teeth. 11 months, four teeth. 15 months, eight teeth. That's the general seven plus four rule. If you do not see teeth at 18 months, talk to your pediatrician, talk to your dentist, and figure out why that is occurring. Um, teething can start as early as three months of age. It is unbelievably painful. It is unbelievably painful. Uh, painful for the child. It increases the amount of drool. The child will be drooling 
on everything. It'll be drooling on uh, your hand. It'll be drooling on uh, a pacifier. It'll be drooling on everything. <clears throat> the gums are very swollen. The gums are very painful. You can use Tylenol after three months of age. What I would suggest is using your finger and either rubbing on the gums itself uh, because uh, make sure you wash your hands first because what that encourages is good oral care. It also encourages teeth brushing. It also encourages some non-nutritive sucking. All of that I'll talk about in a second. You can also use cold. Cold is wonderful. Frozen bananas, frozen teething rings, um, I've even seen people use rib bones. I've seen people use dried squid. I've seen all sorts of interesting things. Please be aware that all of these are choking hazards. You want to make sure that the child is safe. You do not want the child to have any issues with choking. So whatever you give the child for teething, make sure they do not choke on it. Um, Non-nutrient non sucking. Please do not dip a pacifier in sugar. Please do not skip meals with a pacifier. All the pacifier is for, or all the fingers are for, is to help calm, help reduce some of the pain. Uh, and, and it is a child's natural protection uh, in, in response to a lot of the pain. You wouldn't believe how many times I saw the pacifier come out of the child's mouth, fall onto the floor, the parent pick up the pacifier and stick it back in the child's mouth. That is very gross. That is very disgusting. Please do not do that. Uh, at least wash the pacifier with soap and water. Preferably you boil it with boiling water to kill the bacteria. Um, we also encourage uh, children to be as independent as possible as early as possible. So please try to wean the pacifier off by about three to four years of age. Um, we, we like independent children. That makes the parent's life easier, but it also allows the child to really have a good sense of self. Uh, teeth brushing. Again, simply rub the gum uh, with a clean finger. If you want to start with a toothbrush, start around a year. Again, independence around two to three years of age. Uh, and please be aware that the back label of toothpaste says, call the poison control if the child swallows the toothpaste. Because of the fluoride content, you want to spit out the toothpaste. Do not swallow the toothpaste unless you get some sort of fluoride-free toothpaste. Please be aware of that. Read the label. Cavities. Bacteria love sugar. Sugar and bacteria love each other. But our mouths and our teeth do not love bacteria and sugar. Um, so I saw many parents feed their child, especially with formula or fruit juice, at night or for naps, and then they don't clean out the child's mouth. So then the formula sits in the child's mouth for 8, 10, 12 hours. Bacteria love sugar. It provides a good breeding ground for potential cavities. At least wash out the mouth with water or at least rub the gums and encourage the teeth brushing. Um, breast milk, not a problem. You know, uh, children have no issues with breast milk. Uh, breast milk is a completely different topic but breast milk should not lead to cavities. Um, read the back of the labels. Formula has sugar, fruit juice has sugar. Read the back of the labels. Uh, permanent teeth, of course, you have to lose your primary teeth before you can get your permanent teeth. That usually starts around five years old, maybe somewhere around there. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Uh, the molars start appearing anywhere from about 13 years of age or so. Uh, wisdom teeth do show up on x-rays, but not all of them actually erupt out of the gums. Have a dentist or orthodontist monitor spacing. So that was 10 minutes. If you like that video, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, if you want to donate, I am still a student, and I truly appreciate that as well. 
Uh, I'm right on 10 minutes. Thank you for watching. Bye, everybody.